I'm gonna need to record you giving this to me. Okay, so, and this is San Jose, city San Jose, their policy as far as it. Audio. Okay, you're not city of San Jose, that's a different department. Correct, correct, this is San Jose State University. That I, I wanna make sure that it, I will get the policy for San Jose State University or whatever agency has jurisdiction over the Martin Luther King Library. So this is what I have for that. Okay. Because okay? this basically, there's a joint agreement between the city of San Jose and the university. This is Susan Bassey on the distinction between policy, rules, and law, and how it affects policing, the courts, and journalism. This conversation is being Okay, recorded. are you San Jose State Police? Absolutely. Great, what is your name and badge number? It's right here. Okay, wow. I'll give you my name and number. I'm a journalist. This self-proclaimed police officer didn't know the difference between policy and law. He also is a huge source of misinformation. So what they have listed is audio, visual, photog photographic, and or recording of a library customer without their prior consent, audio, video, photogra ph yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. photographic, or other recordings of a library employee which interferes with the employee's ability to perform their work or harass the employee. employee. Okay. Okay. So I did a YouTube video. I'll give it to you. Okay. And I recorded one of your police officers when I was recording him telling me that I didn't have a right to do it. So that's not a police officer, ma'am. It's the San Jose State University police officer. He identified himself as that. Was, and he, he, gave was, me, was he wearing this same yes, color? Yes, I'll show you. Okay, if you'd like to show me, I, I, okay. I'll take a look at it. Okay. okay, are you San Jose State police? Absolutely. Okay, tell me. So he is a community service officer. He is not a police officer. So he misstated the policy then? I am not sure because I haven't seen the whole video but or anything of that nature, and I would have to go and we'd have, you could open up another. I would like department. to open up a complaint. Okay, okay. Let and me go get the paperwork for you so you can do, so I can get that for you. Okay, okay. and I want to explain something. I'm yes. a journalist. I understand. And I record the police. I'm well aware of this fact. You're of your First Amendment auditor, correct? I'm actually an investigative journalist. Okay. And you can call me whatever you want. Oh, no, that, I don't that's, care. That's fine. I'm, okay, so what is your name and badge number? My name is Sergeant Zonzius. Okay. C-O-N-S-I-U-S, badge number 1022. Thank you. And okay. your department is the University Police Department. Correct. We are, I'm with the San Jose State University Police Department. Okay, so let me tell you two things that I'm doing. Yes, ma'am. First of all, I'm investigating a tainted trial series in the library, and I needed to go there and get the microfiche. I understand, as a professional journalist, about recording people and what I'm recording and when I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I also understand my right to record the police. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're allowed to do this by any means. I'm and not... I also understand what happened in that library with Officer Silva. So when I'm in that police, when I'm in that library and I'm being told by a community service person that I can't record, it is very triggering to me as a journalist. Okay. It is also wrong and it is also very bad PR depart for the department. So I'm investigating two things. Three things, the tainted trial series. I'm also investigating Officer Silva, which I've been doing since 2019. And I, because he got hired by the Los Gatos police and that's where I live. So I've covered that extensively. Okay. I do do some YouTube, but I also write for the Davis Vanguard and I'm on their board. Okay. So sometimes police have a hard time understanding who journalists are and they want to, you want to call me a cop watcher oh, or no, an auditor or I don't whatever. Know, I don't know what this is. I mean, you, you, and, you explain I, it to me, and, but we, we deal with both. That's right. In a lot of ways. And, and really there's no distinction. It's first amendment protected activity. Mm -hmm. So that's what I cover. And the, it is very disturbing to be told that you cannot record in a library when we all know what happened in that library with officer Silva. If I record somebody out on the street just passing by in public, I have a right to do right. that. Yeah. I don't have a right to invade somebody's privacy. And as a journalist, I understand that. And it's more about trust. I don't want people pissed off because I put them on video and they were a private person. I understand that distinction. But the other thing that I'm investigating is related to things that happened in that library and how police are responding after we have a very public incident. And if the response is to set a policy and start telling everyone they can't record in the library, that's a problem. Now that we're familiar with policing and the policies versus law and the issues related to immunity, we're going to cover minors counsel. These are attorneys that a judge appoints in a divorce or family law case. And lately, they've been using a lot of reunification camps that are not regulated. And so some lawmakers are addressing that. Um, uh, my name is Maya Lang. I'm 16 from Santa Cruz. And we teach children when an adult harms us or we are afraid, we should ask for help. When me and my brother had the courage to talk about how our mother abused us, 
We did that. We asked for help from many adults, including the police and courts. Instead of being protected, we were turned over to our abuser. I told my story at court, forced to confront my abuser. I was treated like a criminal. On October 20th, the day after, the court called me a liar, ignored my testimony, and gave full custody to my mother. That night, we were violently taken. We were kidnapped. It was a court order, but that does not make it right. We were at my grandmother's house, trying to hide and not be taken. Three large adults we did not know cornered us. They picked us up by the arms and legs and dragged us to their car. As they tried to wrestle me into the car, my head hit against the car door, I partially lost consciousness, and my lips split open. I tried to wrestle free and escape, but they grabbed me and pressed me into the ground. My jeans were pulled down in front of my friends, family, and the police. When I was shoved into the car, I was held on the floor of the car until we got onto the freeway. Me and my brother sat in the back seat of the car sobbing and trying not to let go of each other. After suffering this extreme trauma, it did not end. This was the start of reunification camp. The therapists interrogated us for four days. They threatened us, saying we would be sent to a wilderness camp with no food or blankets until a few cooperated. We learned that to survive, we needed to pretend our abuse never happened. The therapist and our mother called us sociopaths and said we had, quote, false memories. We went seven months with no communication with our father, stepmother, and step-siblings. No one was even allowed to know where we were, and we were forced to change our last name and hide our experience from everyone new we met. We ran away from our mother last month. We are now living with our friends. We still aren't allowed to live with our father because of the same court orders, and our mother is still trying to capture us and put us through another reunification camp or similar program. This is our family court system, and this was deemed in our best interest. And for us to have a process in this state to provide this reunification treatment, which I never heard of, and is frankly barbaric, that we rip people away from their kids. You can have counseling. We can address the counseling. I'm sure there are professional counselors that will deal with manipulative parents. But this treatment is barbaric. We can't have this. But the other thing that I'm investigating is you have a police officer who wrote one of the best police reports I have ever seen in my life. And I want to I want to elevate that. I want to raise that voice for that officer, because if all of you wrote your police reports the way that he wrote that police report, that's remarkable. And you know what the police report was? It involved a publisher, Dan Polcrano, who publishes the San Jose Metro and all the newspapers in the area. And it was a drunk driving and he tried to outrun the police officer. And he tried to close a garage door on him, and then he tried to flash his 911 foundation. There was a related criminal case, and I've pulled the whole file, and I have followed it. I followed preferential treatment that he probably got in the with the district attorney's office. I followed the lawyers that he had, and the distinction between what he got versus what his reporters got when they had to hire a public defender because they couldn't afford to pay for it. So I'm trying to show the difference between how people are treated in the system. Okay but your officer did the very best job on that. I'll get you the names, I'll do all that. I've done all the work, I have the case file. As soon as Dan Polcrano found out I had the case file, he moved to seal the record, but I already have it. So I want your officer praised. When you guys do good stuff, I want it out there. And this police report is the very best police report. And if everybody doesn't empathize with what that young officer went through, having a grown man try to, cro- and they were drinking with Russians. I mean, he wrote all this in the report. It's a, it could be a documentary in its own self because he wrote it that well. So I don't want you guys to always think that what we're doing oh, I, is a gotcha for police. Oh no. You know, I get a call saying, hey, someone's just looking for the policy, and I'm just going to print it off and bring it to you in that manner. Okay, but the chit-chat and everything else that goes on, and, and I know, I, when I see someone doing something bad, I put them up online. But I do want to also put people doing the right thing up online. Okay. And this is my opportunity to talk about your police officer who did do a really good job on that report. Okay. Because it that. is a, when you're in court and you're testifying, if your report is crap, then you're not going to get a conviction. You're 100% right there. And so I want you guys not lying in reports, not taking half steps. I don't want you to just do sloppy work that's either going to get a bad guy off or a good guy convicted. That's what I'm working for. So let me do my job, let me elevate things, get me records on time when I want them. And you know, that's part of it. The California Public Records Act says I'm entitled to records when I ask for them in normal business hours. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you bringing this over to me. I just want everybody to understand this better. And I'm gonna need to do records requests about 
auditors and, and I know police departments have that and they pin us a certain way or they try to paint us a certain way, you got to give us a break. Right. Just like you guys want a break, you got to give us a break. I understand. Okay? I understand. So, so this is Puppy. Hi, Peppy or Puppy? Puppy. Puppy. Hey, Just Puppy. And now that we're all clear on the right to record in public, let's talk about the culture within police departments. I just went to the uh, university police department. Mm -hmm. And there's a police officer that told me that I wasn't allowed to record in this library. Yes, because it's a library policy. Do you know the policy? Because I just picked those up. Do you want to read it out loud to me? Where did you pick these up? At the university police department. Okay. Those are your policies. You want to read that to me about recording in the library? Video record photography and other recording of the library customer without their prior consent, audio, video for photography, or any recording of the library employee, which interferes with the employee's ability to perform work or harassment of the employee. That's Where does that says. say no recording in the library? It says recording of other people's consents. So people come in here and they sometimes record, you know, the employee or the staff or members or other members of the library right so the reason we don't have no recording is because you need to consent right do not ever tell anybody that there's a policy of not recording in the library because that's not what that policy says the policy says you can't interfere with staff right that's what it says right recording is not interfering with staff and i i'm i'm not an officer i'm a community service officer of this library that's what i am okay and my only job here is to enforce policies and that's it. That process as well. There's a lot of complacency, incompetence, and frankly, laziness in our bureaucracies and there's no accountability. And nobody wants to do the hard work of doing the investigations and figuring out what's true and what's not. And a lot of times the system just defaults. I don't know, I wasn't there. I really don't care though. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't care if you record me to be honest. Okay, and I appreciate that, mm -hmm. but you need to understand the law is not policy. Okay. So people can make policies all day long, it doesn't trump the law. Okay. And the right to record anybody who is wearing a badge mm -hmm. and who is paid with taxpayers is absolute. Okay. So I'm letting you know, I got the policy because you guys seemed confused on it mm -hmm. and I wanted to educate you on that. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. But the dog, has anyone talked to you about the dog in here? What would you like to talk to me about? I'm just asking, well, one, Again, the policy states we can't have an animal in here, so. Do you I'm understand the ADA laws about therapy dogs? If you are claiming it's a service animal, then I will leave it alone. I really, you, I'll leave it alone, but I'm just, again, forcing them. Service the animal, policy. and you don't have any right to ask me why it is. So, that's again. Fine. If you're claiming, that's it. Then our conversation ends there. That's it. So, I just want you to understand, why does our conversation start there? Because the law trumps the policy. Start where? For what? On the dog. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I already admitted you're right. ADA states that if you're claiming it's a service animal, by all means, it's a service animal. I'm not gonna argue with that. This is a university library. Yep. We should be really clear on the distinction between policy and law. Okay. That's just it. I just wanna make sure that we're all, you're in a position of educating people. And if you educate them on misinformation by trying to pretend that policies trump law, mm -hmm. that's bad because you're spreading misinformation when you do that. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. That's all I needed. All right. Sounds good. I will see you and you guys have a great day. Thanks.